Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. In the recent years, artificial intelligence has aided in automating some monotonous jobs that humans perform across industries. It has contributed to increase the value that humans deliver in their job roles. But there is also a growing concern that automation may replace people, leaving us with no viable employment opportunities. So where does artificial intelligence go from here? Does it go from good to better or to worse? With this technology beginning to be really used in the workplaces, the discussion is becoming more heated. Hi everyone, this is Shushmita from the Vantage Influencers Podcast in conversation with Amit Sharma, the Management Consulting Manager at Accenture. In this episode, you will know if AI is going to steal your job. So stay tuned and let's welcome our guest. Welcome to the show, Amit. Thanks for having me, Shushmita. Thanks for your time today, Amit. So before moving on to the topic, would you like to tell us about yourself and your corporate journey? Sure. I think uh, I started my life journey in a small town, Bhopal, and then I've moved on across the world. Um, I uh, graduated from Tata Institute of Social Sciences um, with a degree in HR. And then I started my career in a manufacturing firm, started with typical HR roles of HR business partners, moved on to COE roles, performance talent, um, and then did some, um, uh, what do you call it, projects work there. Mm -hmm. From there, I moved on to a pharma company where I was uh, leading organization uh, design globally for them, organization development globally for them. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was on an expatriation to South Africa for a good three, three and a half years. Then um, COVID happened. I had to come back. Um, I joined an Indian startup uh, with around 800 people as their head of HR. Mm -hmm. Um, and currently I'm working with uh, Accenture Strategy. I am a management uh, consulting manager with them. So um, I've had the entire gamut of experience, right, from line roles, uh, consulting roles, CXO roles. So it's been a very um, interesting career till now. Yeah, brilliant career graph, Amit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So moving forward with the topic today, Amit, uh, is AI going to steal your job? So we use uh, AI practically like every day and it has become a part of our lives today. So before we dig into how AI will affect human job roles and capacities, would you please explain how AI has progressed in the recent years, taking into account diverse roles and industries? So thanks for asking this question, Sushmita. Thanks for having this topic because, you know, it's so pertinent right now. There are so many influencers who are talking about AI since ChatGPT has come out. Um, and I think we uh, we think of AI, um, a lot of it has been shaped by Terminator movies and etc. When we think, you know, it's a big thing. Hmm. Uh, basically, any time when any machine, you know, starting with, I think, uh, Turing machine and even before that, any machine which replicates human intelligence, right? So any machine which will do anything beyond basic common sense or beyond basic calculation is basically artificial intelligence. Right. Um, and often, you know, when I'm talking to uh, people, I'm talking to students, I tell them that it's not a new concept, it goes back to 1950s. Um, but I think it was only in 1997 when the world first kind of noticed uh, AI. And, um, you know, the first the first uh, set of uh, history of AI gives a lot to IBM. Uh, in 1997, the IBM had one of their, um, what do you call it, AI bots, uh, Deep Blue. Uh, and they beat Gary Kasparov, who's my favorite chess master too. And the whole world was devastated and they were like, something big has come. How can someone beat um, Gary Kasparov? Mm. And then for the next 14 years, AI was lying low. It was growing like any other technology. And then um, um, IBM Watson. Uh, which was and which still is one of the most advanced AI in the world. Uh, they won Jeopardy, which is a very complex question, uh, uh, set of questions to win. And then the world noticed again, right? Yeah. Um, and then I think a few years after that, Google also started launching their um, uh, their uh, kind of chat interface. Mm -hmm. My favorite, uh, my favorite uh, kind of story in the evolution of AI is one of the least mentioned, and I'm surprised how. Um, so once Kasparov, everyone knows about, uh, you know, IBM's uh, bot beating Kasparov, but then Google created a bot called AlphaZero and they said, we are not going to teach it uh, chess, not even going to tell it how to do an opening strategy, forget about finishing this thing, taught them the basic rules, right? And then they said that now our uh, this bot is going to play against uh, Stockfish, which was the world's AI chess champion of that time. 
and uh, uh, without any training alpha zero played against no one it had no data of what uh, you know humans have played for the last 100 years which stockfish had mm-hmm. and alpha zero beat stockfish so comprehensively that the world was shocked it it didn't lose a single match won some 76 of them lost uh, and draw 24 something of that sort and that was the first time when people realized that when we talk about ai becoming self sufficient or learning things without humans that became uh, kind of a reality but uh, coming back to your question on evolution of ai generally any technology's evaluation depends on two um, kind of two or three factors uh in the case of ai it has always been computational power moore's law which says that you know it keeps on doubling after every uh, few years uh and then the biggest biggest factor for evolution of ai is data availability yeah most of the um, ai that we have right now operate uh, using machine learning which is basically that you know they look at the data and then they learn themselves create their own learning algorithms right now the only differentiator between a good and a great ai and whoever will win this war for ai will be whoever has the maximum amount of data data right uh, and right now as the world has expanded our data has grown especially in the last 10 15 years and that is why ai has experienced such growth yeah from uh, a user point of view the last factor would be internet speed like earlier you could ask a question but it would take a couple of minutes to revert but now they can just revert sort of immediately hmm and i think uh, one of the things i'd also want to add is that um, we nowadays we've started seeing ai as a chatbot which is not the case right ai is everywhere uh, when you are watching and amazon says are you still watching or when um, yeah. tiktok and instagram tell you you know you saw a dog video yesterday do you want to see a cat video today right <laughs> or exactly. uh, when you go for applying for a loan and they look at your sibil they look at some of your past transaction data um, when you are typing on word and it says you know i think maybe this sentence can be constructed better um, everything that you can look off will have ai i think there's almost everything um, that you have right now has ai um, of course gaming is one of the gaming is always whenever you look at a technology and you want to look at their potential me being a gamer i always say look at gaming so now earlier you had those um, uh, characters who were not true but they were still playing in the game npcs they had a brain of their own that was ai it, and it has been there for what 20 years now um and now um, you have games where what you do will decide the story of the game that is all happening using artificial intelligence using um, multiple scenarios which have already been taught to the ai so basically to answer you it's everywhere every industry that you can think of has uh, the use of ai but right now the artificial intelligence that we have and i know it's a very controversial statement mm. to say mm. is very rudimentary almost every industry has ai but i wouldn't say any of them have been radically transformed um you know and completely changed by ai except for a very very few because ai still has at least 5 years of evolution left it's very basic right now yeah so a long answer to your short question yeah and uh, nowadays uh, everyone is talking about chat gpt right 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 So like is it just a chatbot or is it something so special that is disrupting the tech industry as a whole Uh it's a, it's a very difficult question but look um I like being very honest and open about this I'm going to say this that chat gpt is not the most advanced technology that the world has seen hmm. to be very honest Yeah then why is it so much in the news There are two reasons for it okay so I'll tell you Microsoft released a bot in uh, a similar chatbot Tay in 2016 um meta released a blender bot in 2022 so it's not the first kind of chatbot that is so advanced mm. what has happened is if i have to tell you something very technically uh, it's a large language model um, uh, chatbot but basically google um, came up with something in 2017 uh, and that is the t of this thing which is transformer so so basically what it, earlier say before using transformer technique we had uh, what do you call it long shot uh, uh, technique which we would use uh but what google did was it said basically if i ask you something a question earlier we used to look at every bird as being the same right so if i say jack and jill went up the hill jack jill up the hill were all single words yeah yeah and that is why the response quality of previous chatbots was so poor hmm. in 2017 google came up with something where it said you know i am going to look at the whole sentence look at every individual word and then i am going to use vectors to first assign importance and second assign interrelation not chat gpt has used that transformer model brilliantly that is the only one thing which differentiates chat gpt from other which makes it more intelligent 
than a lot of the stuff that we've seen but again i will say chat gpt is an extremely extremely basic chatbot okay. um it only has memory till 2021 it doesn't even know what happened in 2022 hmm. there is a research paper which their team have uh, has released telling how 800 people were used to train it right so some people will ask a question other people will answer it chat gpt will also answer those questions from the internet another team will kind of say okay is it a good answer bad answer it's like training a dog good dog bad dog yeah. why i say it is a very rudimentary technology is because chat gpt is just going around the internet finding things which already exist and then tweaking it for you it's mm. like going to google instead of finding a page yeah, making things uh, the search uh, searching uh, things in google easier for us absolutely but you know yeah. um, uh, the reason chat gpt is so hyped is because your internet technology influencers they need to hype it otherwise their revenue will fall let me give you an example chat gpt is using codes right uh it is giving you computer codes but that has already been there for the last 5 years there have been websites where coders can write the code and it will give you the rest of the code mm. there are websites where you can give your uh, there are ai websites where you can give your basic commands and it will um it will kind of uh, what do you call it uh, create a presentation for you there is one of my favorite websites called adept.ai you can go to it and you can tell it that you know i want to put in an entry on my workday system or on my salesforce system i have just come up with a new business lead it will go to the system and put in entry for you these are much more advanced than chat gpt i think chat gpt is very very high on publicity hmm. uh it's it's just basically going to the internet finding things and giving back to you and and i'm going to give a prediction here and i'm sure we'll have this recording 5 years from now Google is going to kill ChatGPT. ChatGPT will not even exist in five years from now, simply because Google is sitting, like I told you, in AI. The good or bad is decided only by one parameter, which is how much of data do you have. Yeah, yeah. Google has billions of website, millions of website, and not just websites, but they have also ranked those website to know which has better quality content better quality versus content. which doesn't have the best quality right, content. Right. Right. So once the reason Google has not done this yet. is because the moment they launch their own chatbot which is an llm bot they will lose out on their most profitable part on the business and that is why they have not done it they will do it they will beat chat gpt and then somebody from china will beat google also because ai hates laws and regulations in us if i am taking your data i have 100 laws in china there are no laws chinese ai is always going to be better than any american ai so these are kind of my um, predictions when i'm talking about chat gpt i honestly do not understand entire hype uh, that is created around that mm. and also one last thing is uh, of the overall number of search queries that we have once the novelty dies down everybody is so excited i want to use chat gpt <laughs> i think only 20 30% queries are going to use an llm where you need someone to respond to you so it's uh, it's not going to be world changing however having said that 5 years from now this technology will evolve what i'm saying when it times come and that is where it will start you know challenging us for our jobs and stuff like that right now i read on twitter that i have let go of my marketing team because chat gpt is here i'm going to say this and i, I know it's controversial every single founder who have said that they fired someone because of chat gpt is basically lying for likes it is not that evolved that <laughs> it can replace a human right now okay and so quickly moving on amit um, it would be great if you can uh, talk about some of the core areas where we can expect to see advancements when it comes to you know ai because it is definitely going to progress significantly in the coming years isn't it i think uh, you're right ai is definitely going to significantly uh, progress i think the first thing which will happen is which is already happening with chat gpt bard and everything is ai is going to help human beings a lot yeah it is going to be that friend you call to find out things so it is going to be that it is going to take away basic work it is going to help people do more with their work that is something which will happen in the next one year once ai evolves as well as people start uh, understanding how do you ask the right question to an ai even right now if you look at something which is already available in teams the ai will take notes for you it will summarize open points for you it will um, uh, it will suggest what to write next if you go to google if you are looking at the screen uh like you know you have uh, if i if you are recording this and it was a video i could look and read and the ai will make it appear like you know i am looking at the camera so one of the first things is that it will start complimenting human beings making their life easier mm. then ai will be used for a lot of decision making 
better decision making is what i hope yeah for example microsoft everybody uses a microsoft suit right uh, outlook most companies use a uh, microsoft outlook uh, for corporate this thing microsoft already has a feature which will tell you you know which are the people who are working which are the departments which are working in silos um it will look at the tone of the email and tell you what your teams are feeling so this is something which is anyhow going to happen there was an experiment in an ivy league where they gave a device to everyone and they said now go and talk to your colleagues every day and live life like it was normal based on the device it could tell who is the most influential people who are the most talented people influential people getting work done based on the tone and other things interviews will be automated so like i said decision making will follow after after we've done with this and then will come the kind of ai automation revolution where it will start taking over the entire end to end responsibilities even in complex roles thank you for bringing up this points amit your expertise on the subject matter is evident and greatly appreciated so moving forward i came across this research that says that only 35% of global consumers trust uh, how firms implement ai and uh, furthermore uh, 77% believe that corporations uh, should be held accountable for using ai so apart from reaping its benefits it's high time that enterprises uh, become aware of the new and pending regulations and the procedures that they must take to ensure uh, compliance this is where uh, the role of responsible ai comes into play so would you like to take a moment to describe what uh, responsible ai is see responsible ai is a term which i think google has been the flag bearer for them they have a page dedicated to it where they mention that you know these are the principles that we will work with basically responsible ai is uh, about using ai with the right intentions being fair inclusive uh, making sure there is security privacy in built it's just like saying um, don't be evil uh, what google used to say right like um if you are using ai to remove biases hmm. that is responsible ai okay so if if i'll just take a step back and and i'm sorry if i use a bit of social commentary i am from a social science college so that comes in uh i was mentioning about previous chatbots from microsoft and blender bot all of these came in the moment they came in within the first 48 hours they became extremely racist and sexist extremely extremely racist and sexist right you'll ask them something they'll give you something terrible this happened within one week both the chatbots were closed by their company because there was so much furor so much of anger from people on social media mm-hmm. i think we now live in a different time uh, of influencers otherwise even chatbot would have already been uh, chatgpt would have been already closed going by the fact that it is telling people how to smuggle cocaine it is being sexist it is giving racist comments um it is stealing code uh, from another website so there is mm-hmm. there is a lot which is an responsible ai issue the second thing is that it is ai's responsibility now that it is not just guiding you but giving you the final option answer to make sure that it is accurate and google has just learned it the very hard way with a 100 billion dollar loss because in their promos their ai gave a few factually incorrect statements right uh, i don't know if you've heard about that one but what happened that was uh, last week but today even bing gave wrong responses obviously their stock did not fall as much because we don't hold them to the same standard of accountability that we hold google to mm-hmm. one of the things that i'll give you an example of responsible ai somebody asked bing to write a cover letter and bing said that uh, i can't write a cover letter for you because it will be unfair to the other applicants yeah that's beautiful right mm-hmm. but who decides what is ethical or not one of the top one of the world's top e-commerce companies was using ai for hiring and they were training their ai on previous um, you know on the selection criteria of the previous recruiters you have to feed data to the ai right and uh, then they realized that their ai is so sexist that it was not shortlisting women and it was not sorting anyone who has a black name forget about whether they mentioned on their cv they are black or not so they decided that in the entire recruitment process we will not use ai at all because of these responsible ai issues and then i mean of course you would have heard uh, that you know generally there's a very very big term on responsible ai which google is again coming up with which is uh, constitutional ai they've just bought a company anthropic uh, which works on constitutional ai but that's a different discussion the the last thing that i'd want to bring up in talking about responsible ai and again this is something which i'm i'm very um, interested in is there is a, there is responsible ai and then there are ethics so i don't know if you've heard about the shopping cart uh, dilemma 
Hmm. Now, this is something really interesting, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, would you like to please uh, explain that to us? Sure, sure. So shopping cart dilemma is basically imagine there is a shopping cart rolling, but let me give you another example. Let me just use AI in this. So suppose there is a car. Hmm. Okay. Suppose there's a Tesla you are sitting in. Okay. And you are driving a Tesla, which has AI in it. Suppose you are driving on a road and there are children who are playing on the road. There are four children and it's just you on the car. And there is only one probability that if you want to save them, there is a 90% chance that you are going to die. And now your AI has to take this decision of whether I save these four children at your cost or whether I save your life and let these four children go. Now, imagine if I make it even more complex and I say there are there are 10 children there, but it is you as well as your baby sitting in your car. Yeah. And if you try and save those children, you and your baby will both die. Yeah. Now, how do we decide this? is um is basically one of these dilemmas that we will keep on struggling with as we go ahead and uh, i think someone even said that you know uh, knowing how the world works and how we commercialize thing you might even get cars which will be this is the car which will save your life you pay a uh, you pay 200000 dollars for this mm. and this is a car that will save the other person's life you only pay 120000 dollars for that and now you have to make that purchasing decision so uh, responsible AI, ethics in AI is something that you are going to hear a lot of. And let me tell you now, for the next five, seven years, we are going to do really, really poorly in this, which we already are doing. Yes. So it's definitely an emerging field and uh, there is still a lot of work to be done to ensure that it is developed and deployed uh, in an ethical and responsible manner, isn't it, Amit? So now coming uh, to the main point that we really want to um, emphasize on today, uh, that what fraction of jobs will be lost to automation? So to brief, undoubtedly, will be left behind if we do not implement AI, but with AI, human jobs will be reduced. In fact, it is argued that automation is likely to affect uh, different jobs uh, differently, uh, with some jobs being replaced entirely, others being transformed but not uh, necessarily right. eliminated. And additionally, it is also said that automation may create new job opportunities in technology, uh, data analysis and design. So here I have like three questions for you, Amit. In your opinion, first one, the first question to you is what fraction of employment will be lost to automation? Look, it's a it's a very difficult question. Um, and I will tell you why. I think uh, there is a lot of prediction which is coming from McKinsey about, you know, 30 percent of the jobs will be affected by this thing by 2030 and stuff like that. But if you go to past, if you go to the past, any time that you feel like whenever there has been a disruptive technology, when mobile phones came in, right? Or uh, when AI came in, whenever there has been a disruptive technology, McKinsey and the likes have been wrong by at least 100%, if not more. If you ask me my personal prediction, I think that we will be the last generation that will go to work. The nine to five, as we know it, will be over for almost 90% of us. Uh, by the time the next generation comes in, most of us will be living in a jobless society where most of the job will be done by AI. Although we will be taken care of and you will see that a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of talks about universal basic income supporting this thing. I always like to go back in history. So uh, pardon me for that. You know, when the industrial revolution happened, steam engine happened and then industrial revolution happened, every time there's this argument that, you know, human beings were never affected by technology, we started doing something else, right? Yeah. So eventually more jobs were created. It's technically how it works. But human beings only have two skills, physical and cognitive. Physical skills is something which machines and AI have already come from. So human beings moved one step up and said, now we are going to move to cognitive skills. We are going to code and do all these things. But now AI is coming for your cognitive skills. Mm. It is actually coming for um, uh, coding and all those things, etc. Where I don't think there is anything anywhere else that we can like move ahead. And and and, and I think just let me uh, come back to where I started, which was the Terminator movie, etc. Like you know, the Terminator movie has set up us to believe in our mind that it will be one AI versus one human, right? That is how they show the competition. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the case. It's not one human versus one AI. It is one human versus millions of AI. When one AI will learn something, it can teach that to a network of a million, right? Say, for example, I start using AI for um, for creating a podcast or uh, or sort of rating a podcast. One AI will learn something that, you know, when you use this tone, this happens and this is what people like. 
the whole world will know it it can there will be networks of ai which will teach each other based on their observations hmm. when a human being learns something it generally stays with them and it dies with them they'll teach a couple of people here and there but that is the first thing we need to stop looking at it as one ai versus one human second thing is that it's not that ai is coming for us alone what is going to happen is that there are advancements happening in other areas of work um for example biomedical engineering is involving a lot now i can put in like when you are speaking in the same room i can put in a device to see what is happening in your brain right and i can see what are the things in this podcast that i said that released a particular hormone in your brain so the next time we meet i will say more of it mm. right so it's not that ai is let me let me give you this example i i always hear this that you know creative field is something ai cannot be creative ai cannot create songs ai cannot write poems right well yes as per creativity is concerned i think ai can write songs poems and be creative but uh, i'm not uh, sure if it can impart rhythms and tunes to that uh, songs and poems i agree you're right right now it cannot right but now think if ai and biomedical engineering combine Hmm. uh you've heard of neural link where elon musk is trying to put a chip in everybody's head right hmm. so now imagine 10 15 years from now and uh, 10 15 is too much i think 10 years will be where this will happen 10 years from now uh and pardon me for putting you in this scenario but imagine you've had this break uh, you've had a breakup which is devastating and this is what you will know harari uh, quotes he says you've had a devastating breakup generally what we do right now is we go to taylor swift and you know uh, we have arjit singh and all those songs is what we listen to mm. because creative is these are the creative people right yeah but imagine if there is a chip in your head for 10 years and the chip knows you so well it knows which are the exact beats to which you respond best it knows uh, which are the exact words that you uh, uh, that you respond to and also it knows your entire romantic story why will you listen to a taylor swift song when this person can create a song only on the beats that you like which segregate the hormones in your um uh, in your mind or the chemicals to be more precise in your mind and at the same time it will tell you a story that you can associate to now imagine if with this field i also merge therapy now there are there are stages of uh, uh, kind of dealing with grief so it starts by telling you songs that get you to uh, uh, denial then it starts by telling you songs that get you to acceptance right and that is where even if it's the most creative thing ai will do it ai will end up doing it yeah so ai will do all this thing it will read our mind basically that's what you are saying isn't it so isn't that kind of a dangerous thing as well in future see what i'm saying is uh, you're right in a in a way you can say that it will read our mind but let me put it this way i think um, our mind is overrated what is our mind our mind is basically uh, um, uh, you know we think of us as you know such difficult people to interpret our mind is basically just a set of chemicals something happens it releases chemicals to respond to it yeah i do agree i am 100% with you it will be very 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 dangerous extremely dangerous especially with all the other technology around it that is evolving um and going by the fact that it is almost inevitable right now with neuralink and all those things that it will be very very dangerous yeah even in our daily lives right you can see uh, yeah. unethical ai uh, for example suppose i am uh, talking about pizza now and then if i suddenly open my mm-hmm. facebook account uh, i see a pizza advertisement that's true that's true that's ai and that's very unethical use of ai that's yeah, correct yeah exactly exactly and and you know you know it is a problem and and i think initially and and i'm i'm going to again go back to history initially we will stop a lot of it a lot of governments will say don't do this don't do that but then it will just take one trigger for us to lose that and go ahead like um for example world war 1 and 2 right they are one of the worst periods of humanity but at the same time a lot of significant scientific evolution has happened there in the next 20 30 years there will be one such very desperate time another pandemic something big has happened some terrorist has dropped a nuclear weapon anything of this sort will happen and then we as humans ourselves will let technology let rogue and we will let go of our morals and values as as we have done a lot of times in the past i really hope that is not the case but i am completely with you that um, the scenario that we have when ai right now is just listening to us it is making decisions for us and uh, that is what makes things very very bleak percent and amit uh, would also like to know uh, what uh, percentage of current jobs do you think will be improved by ai 
I think that would be a hundred percent for sure. I think um, if you look at the way jobs are currently structured, uh, or even if let me just give you an example of using an HR's um, job, right? Hmm. Uh, initially, HR had to like do a lot of things like pushing paper and then you know managing forms and everything. Right now, a lot of this is done by your ERP systems. Then comes the next level of evolution where the bottom, and this will happen for every job. Those uh, repeatable uh, tasks, uh, redundant tasks, will be done by AI. Um, for example, uh, earlier we had uh, a lot of the effort for HR was about handling queries, letting them know what the policy is, you know, where to find this thing, where to apply. Right now, all of that. Will very soon uh, and is already happening in a lot of companies. Is done by a chatbot, uh, yeah. where you can go and say, you know, what is my leave balance? The chatbot answers for you. Earlier, you will go to an HR; it will take five minutes. So, AI is going to enrich jobs. I think it will enrich every job possible, and then will be the next phase, which is where what I mentioned about AI helping in decision making. Hmm. Uh, right now, if you will see, there there is. uh what do you call it there is a mad rush around uh, skills uh there every single erp system that you can think of uh, is coming up with an opportunity marketplace skill matching ai for example if 5 years back you wanted to find someone who is best at this job you will have to call some people put up an advertisement even within your own company you have to depend on who you know is good or not good as we get into ai there is already a level of evaluation where people can put in their skill sets and the moment you want a job or you are about to post a job ai will say hey you know what i think there are three people within your organization who are absolutely great for this before you post a yeah. job outside yeah. please have a look mm-hmm. right it's it's already happening but there is the next level of evaluation uh, evolution which will come in right now people have to enter that you know i have these skills very soon ai will start deducting that for you you worked in this project this is your skill so this way it will move every job up the value chain especially hr hr's job is going to get so much important there will be less people in hr but the job that they are going to do is going to be so much greater than answering queries and giving certificates and all those things which will be something which will be a trend that will happen in every job basic coding will be done by by ai and then taking it next will be uh, the job of uh, coders if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur they don't want to code ai will help them work with no code so ai is going to make the world a better place for companies and individuals and push everybody's job uh, a little bit up and higher on the value chain for sure it's going to happen in the next couple of years and it has already happened yeah also i'll uh, i believe you'll uh, agree that ai will create uh, new job opportunities in the future I think it it has as per now if you talk about today AI has created so many job opportunities I think the, uh, I think I was reading somewhere 7 billion dollars have been pumped into AI there are so many people who are being um kind of uh, uh, working as coders and beyond there is a specific example where you know people always have you seen that meme which says look at this helicopter there is a there is a cameraman on the helicopter mm. and he's uh, showing uh, the news which is happening and someone says within the last 10 years both the cameraman as well as the helicopter have lost their job and then they show that a drone is now doing it have you seen that one yeah it's a very popular meme right but it is factually incorrect because it is not one person that will now fly that uh, drone mm. it will be two three four people there will be one person who will be flying it another person will be managing the camera another one who will be checking the altitude safety yeah. other things yeah. right yeah uh, For example, U.S. Army has started uh, removing fighter pilots and replacing them with fighter zone. So technically, one fighter pilot's job is lost, but one drone takes thirty people to manage it. So technically, AI is creating jobs, mm. and AI is creating better jobs, and it will continue to uh, do that. However, um, there will be several jobs, uh, for example, which will be under threat for uh, if AI driving starts tomorrow. it will obviously give uh, you know um, give give a job to say a million coders who will be managing this entire ai driven driving but if you remove all the drivers there will be uh, what 100 million people at least whose uh, job is dependent on driving that will go away mm-hmm. so ai might be bad for the most bottom of jobs like watchman uh, now if ai is going to tell you the moment a mo- movement has happened and it's going to manage it and it is going to start shutting down doors you don't need a watchman so these jobs will go away but most corporate jobs 
will still stay they will get better and a lot of new jobs will be created uh, because of ai which will be value adding jobs that human beings will will be supported by ai ai will tell them that this is what needs to done AI, uh, and human beings will take decisions and take actions based on that yeah so it all means that ai will have all the you know the knowledge that uh, the data and the information but ultimately it's a human that who will know, you know operate the machine in certain scenarios i think the 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 basic concept about an ai is that it is supposed to be eventually independent and manage those tasks but i think initially yes it will be this way that ai will throw in the data human beings will take the decision or ai will even recommend the decision but it will be a human being that will be taking it at yeah. least for the next 10 15 20 years i think it will be this way where ai will be playing a supporting role to a lot of humans who will be doing the difficult or the task so uh, i uh, there's always a saying that there is no substitute to human ingenuity i believe as per now it is not there we'll have to wait and see how much ai can evolve to compete yeah so we uh, also talk about a, a lot about uh, nowadays about empathy about respect in the workplace about freedom in the workplace so all these comes under i think human connections you know th- those are human feelings and emotions that we maintain in the workplace so once ai replaces people are these things going to stay see there there is always a pattern the lesser if if there are like a uh, if there are 100 people only working and giving you a revenue which is much larger which is a point which technology has always given us right um, once that happens importance of people always goes high so the future belongs to people and that is why it belongs to hr say i'm, I'm just going to give an example suppose you are working in an organization which has a sales force of 100000 people and 100000 people are doing the selling compared to now where ai is letting only five people manage digital marketing and doing the same amount of selling these five people are gold to me and i can invest so much amount in them and not care about the world you know because these five people are going to give me so much of money so the future belongs to people the importance of people who are in jobs is going to go much much higher with every passing year and it's great for hr because we we'll have higher budgets we we'll have to take care of them empathy human feelings connections i think what the pandemic has done is that it has taken this conversation their importance to a completely completely different level true i think they are here to stay mm-hmm. and that and and they are here to stay forever i i personally believe that ai can you know do a lot of things even understand how you are feeling when you are lying all those things but if you have to be made like to feel a certain way it has to be another human which will give you that and that is why you are right when you talk about these feelings these are super super important and these are always here to stay okay and uh, yeah talking about the modern uh, workforces uh, future you know young people uh, must contribute more than just knowledge to this uh, workforce so apart from uh, leveraging ai for their own uh, benefits the most important skills for the future uh include uh, some critical thinking uh, creativity curiosity and communication skills so what the future of work will mean for uh, jobs and skills according to you amit i think skills you will see a trend earlier we used to talk about competencies competencies job were there for 5 years 10 years you know you would have heard a lot about competencies you know everywhere um right now if you follow any of the big erp providers or any of the big thought leaders you will not find the word competence in a lot of places you will find it replaced by skills give it a couple of years and you will not even find skills you will start finding micro skills hmm. what has happened is that what we used to think of as a skill as a competency are now being broken down further because of ai technology the amount of movement that is happening in the system now i can't say that this guy is a good presenter has good communication skills all of that are too broad now we have to get very very specific and say this is what this person does well this is the skill these are the three micro skills this is how it will help them do this job better so that is one of the biggest transition which has happened in um, in the entire competency skill learning space the other thing is i was reading this uh, report by world economic forum where they said that uh, the half life of a skill was uh, is right now down to only 4 years and if if it is a technical coding skill then it is 2 to 3 years to to explain half life right to explain half life it basically means that after 4 years if you learn something today in 2013 by 2017 50% of it will have no value to the world it is not relevant anymore 
and by 2021 the entire skill that you have learned is of no value in 8 years hmm. so uh, and it is even worse for coding and all those technical skills what is going to happen now is that people uh, there will be a lot of learning relearning reutilizing this is already happening and this will only continue learning agility is going to be a differentiator for companies for employees for individuals so if you are somebody who is young and who is listening to this podcast just remember that when we were growing up uh, and actually even further when we were uh, like uh, we were children somebody could have learned a excel how to create an excel macro in vba and get that as a job for life live off it for 20 30 40 years today you can be a top data scientist who is the best at r and 5 years later you can be redundant so learning agility is one thing that will define the world uh, and everybody will have to keep learning nobody if anybody right now is just sitting down and not learning they are um, going to be irrelevant if not today then 20 10 20 30 years because the world is changed mm. the second thing is that uh, I I started by telling about Gary Kasparov and do you remember that when yes. AI uh, won against him right yeah it was a watershed moment but what happened after that it was not that you know everybody said oh my god now AI is better than us let's stop playing chess like let's wrap up mm-hmm. chess board throw it in the corner we didn't <laughs> do that right yeah right that's how humans are they are resilient by default we are born resilient so what happens what happened after that is we started using AI to train our chess players now everybody has competition against ai and they simulate ai in a particular way that i want to play against aggressive ai i want to play in against smaller ai so it was first for big chess masters mm. right now you and i can play against ai for free and improve our game so two things happened one we started using ai for our learning second we democratized it and made it free the same thing will happen for learning and skills as well Right now, if you want to go and learn to code, you take a training, and then you know you will learn from someone. They will tell you what how it works. Five years from now, you can start coding, and the AI will tell you. For example, the AI will tell you, "Oh, this is a good code. No, 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 don't write this line. Why don't you write it this way?" And initially, it will be paid, and then eventually, it will become free. That is how human being works. So AI is going to make human lives so much better as we go ahead. There is, of course, the downside or the risk. that comes with the fact that ai is controlled by human beings themselves and we always have to assume or we always have to hope that they use it for the best case possible that has been the case till now i really hope that is how it will uh, continue yeah so it would be great like if we are trained and equipped uh, to operate uh, alongside machines rather than against them isn't it that is where the world is going to be yes. uh, we will always it will always be human and machine complementing each mm. other but that's very well said that's true mm. yeah and uh, young workers should be uh, you know trained for that i think we should have an ecosystem in which we uh, teach about machines and ai uh, right from our schooling level isn't it oh schooling is a very very sensitive subject for me if you ask me it's very touchy i don't know why the schooling system that was created a 100 200 years ago mm-hmm. is what we are still following we are still considering that everybody of the age of 7 is equal mm-hmm. and should sit in fourth standard for example and then we teach all of them the same things which are rote learning things what you said is so important right now when we were living a 100 150 years back there were no computers there were no ai knowing things having access to information was the differentiator between success and failure right yeah that is how you will define genius versus yeah, not genius yeah. that is not the reality right now right now information is readily available mm. interpreting it and using it is the on differentiator the right for success and that is not something which our school or college system prepares us for right very true so right and that is not just school and college even if you are working as an hr professional it is time for you to realize that the way my generation so i am uh, i'm 30 so like uh, in my 30 so third uh, my generation learned versus somebody who's 21 learns is totally different and you have to cater it to them differently and like you said technology and learning has to go together if you don't do it then the learning is going to be of um, what you call it of value for a very small period of time Yeah well thank you so much Amit for all that you have shared today honestly your knowledge and understanding of the field of AI are truly impressive and i was amazed by the depth and breadth of your insights so uh, if our audience want to connect to you further where they can find you 
Sure, absolutely. You know, the first thing I'd want to say is that you know there are uh, when you look at entire AI conversation, there is both doomsday uh, uh, prediction, which is the line which I told today, and then there is a prediction about AI being all good, right? Which is something which I could do another day as well. But there is a there is a podcast, there is a video where you will know Harari, uh, the Israeli author, is talking to someone who is an AI scientist, and they are both taking opposite sides. So one of them is talking about the negatives, and the other is talking about the positives. Hmm. If any of our listeners is interested in that, I would highly recommend, um, you know, having a listen to that one. But if you'd want to reach me, I I am uh, very active on LinkedIn. I almost post every uh, day or every second day on LinkedIn. So I think LinkedIn would be the best way to find me. Amit Sharma is a very common name, but if you add the company to it, there is a good chance that you will find me. Huh. Or you can find me on Twitter. Twitter is where I have more fun, more politically incorrect um, uh, uh, space for me. But there you will find me as HR guy Amit. Yeah. So would you like to tell me the name of the podcast that you are saying? Uh, it's not a podcast. It's a video. Uh, I'll mm-hmm. maybe share the link or something with you. Uh, okay. Sure. It I'll... was a conference where both of them were invited to argue on both sides. Huh. And I just want to clarify, Sushmita, that you know, don't listen to this podcast and get depressed that everything is going to be over. I have <laughs> chosen to tow a side. We are all predicting the future. The next time you meet me, I can actually be towing the completely other side and telling you how AI is going to make this world a beautiful place. Okay, sure, Amit. Sure, thank you for your time today, Amit, and for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sushmita, for having me and for asking such amazing, pertinent questions. It was great. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.